I'm still not courageous enough to speak off the top of my head. I'm using words that I have written down. Number six on the ring of virtues around the sun cross on the journey toward self-knowing and day six in the creation story when God creates the animals and humans in his own image. That's what courage is. Even though it is number six of seven of the virtues, it turns out, according to Maya Angelou, that you can't practice any other virtues consistently without practicing courage consistently. It seems odd that we will find it so far down the line in the virtue placement on the sun cross. Until you start following the flow of selfhood as it's outlined. It's wonderful that it's so easily accessible and easy to remember. When we find ourselves stuck or lost, all we have to do is go back and follow the flow. It begins with blessing from source or spirit which opens the heart and the mind, allowing us to understand and to see with new eyes. That leads to new directions through intelligent action, supported by a sense of mission and empowerment from source, which gives us the encouragement to act courageously. That gets fed by enlightened thinking inspired by source and fed by our amazing imaginations. Makes me happy. It makes me smile just to think about it. I've decided I'm going to make a copy of the finished sun cross in all its wonder, simplicity, and reminders and hang it on the wall so I can look at it more frequently. So when I get stuck or lost, it'll be there for my reference. Several moments stood out for me across course of the workshop. Most of us were surprised at how courageous we already are. That indicated to me just how much more work I have to do on self-appreciation. We were asked to make a list of shaming phrases in four areas of our lives, physical, mental, emotional, and sovereign. I was amazed at how quickly and easily we did that task. Those phrases were all too familiar to us. And under sovereign, they get particularly ruthless. Here's some examples. Too fat. Too thin. Too smart for your own good. Crying is a sign of weakness. You're worthless. We were asked to name someone who stood out as courageous for you. I was surprised to find myself bringing forward my ancestors who were driven from their homeland of Switzerland and persecuted because they refused to give up their freedom to be independent spiritual thinkers. At that moment, I was in gratitude to them for being the shoulders upon which I stand. We were asked to write down something new we were feeling called to at that at the beginning of the workshop. Again, I was surprised to find myself writing, wanting to know more and understand more about the concept of the spirit of the womb, where courage springs from. I also found myself wondering about the virtue number seven, grace. And how to allow that to flow from where and who I am today. One of the most amazingly loving and liberating experiences of our workshop was being given the opportunity to share with the group who we are and why we are here as spiritual beings. To write those words down and then stand and declare them to the group was freeing and healing. I recommend it to you as a spiritual practice. Finally, I came away wanting to know more about this dark shadow of courage, that being shame. 
It can be so subtle in our, our lives, yet it holds great power over us. We learn that it's the first thing to come into our lives that takes away our primal spirituality. And the last link thing to leave, because it's so good at hiding out. It's so much a part of our surrounding culture that we forget that we are swimming in it. I'm currently reading a book written by Valerie Carr. It's a memoir and a manifesto about revolutionary love. She writes powerfully and graphically about how our culture makes us seem strange and untrustworthy, even to ourselves. To learn more about shame takes courage. But I want to know what I'm up against so that I can really give it my all. Which, in the end, is what we're really called to do. Is it not? Thank you. Thank you, Becky.